Hello everyone, welcome to yet another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use Cucumber to test your API. Cucumber is a testing tool that supports behavior-driven design. Even though Cucumber is very coupled with BDD, I'm not going to get into it in this video, but here's a screenshot from Wikipedia so you can have context on what BDD is. Cucumber reads executable specifications written in plain text and makes sure that the software does what those specifications say. The specifications consist of multiple examples or scenarios. They follow the Gherkin syntax, which is a given when then steps, and each scenario is a list of steps that Cucumber needs to go through. Cucumber verifies that the software conforms with those specifications and outputs a report whether the scenario was failed or successful. And in order for Cucumber to understand those scenarios, they must follow the Gherkin syntax. There are three main steps when it comes to Cucumber automation testing. We need to have a software that we want to test, of course. We need to write the steps using the Gherkin syntax, and we need to write executable code that connects to those BDD steps. If you're just getting into automation testing, or you just want to make sure your API works as it's supposed to, I think Cucumber is a great tool we can use for that. I personally like Cucumber because it couples with the behavior driven development and BDD is a great tool you can use in a, in a bigger team if you want to connect with QA, business and all the things together. Now let's get into VS Code and I'll show you how you can use Cucumber to test your APIs. Now I've got a package here set up which is a GraphQL server and it has the um, SpaceX data API which is based from the previous video but it has these details here that um, we can test so this is the only query we can make it's basically to get a launch um, it has some details here and it takes an id and then returns um, a launch with that id so i'll show you oh i need to start my server so here we go it returns an object of a launch and the other details inside that object if I send an ID that is not valid or doesn't exist, it will return um, an error saying the launch ID with this ID was not found. And those are basically the two scenarios that I want to test. Um, I've got Cucumber installed here. I've got uh, Chai. So basically what Cucumber is, it's a tool that connects BDD scenarios with executable code. Now, if you want to test the actual response and whatever you want to expect from that response you can use other tools like Jest or Chai or Mocha or other stuff I chose to use Chai in this example we have a few Chai packages installed here uh, basically each of them are gonna serve certain purpose and you'll see in a bit I'm building the test using TypeScript and I'm running the test with this uh, command, which is cucumber.js, and I'm giving these, these, these are the step definitions, basically the feature and the scenario definition, and this is the executable code, which will be transpiled from TypeScript to JavaScript. Let's go ahead and create our tests. The way we define steps is we um, use Gherkin's syntax, which is basically given when then, and uh, this is how that would look like. Perfect. Now let's actually define the, the executable code for this step. Now, now what I've done here is I imported Chai, which um, needs a few plugins in order to test this, the H Chai HTTP plugin is used for making requests and the Chai subset is to expect an object to contain a subset of something we define. You can see how we're going to use this. Now let's define our steps. Given, and I'm not going to use whatever copilot gives me, so given, we, the string here needs to match the given exactly or you can use regex but for now just know that this needs to match um, this in order to be able to run this takes as a second parameter a function but this basically is making a graphql request to our local host which is where my graphql server is going to be running 
and it's going to use this query and the variable that we set in the previous step. Now while this is done, we can then um, define the then step. And this is basically where we actually test the response to make sure it matches our um, data. And I'm going to copy this object. Perfect. Um, let's run this and see if it works. I think my script was called Cucumber. Okay, so now it failed. Now I need to figure out why. Um, apparently request post is not a function. Um, I had a typo in my, in my local host, but if I run the test now, see that they are all passing which is great news we have our first api test now let's define another test for the scenario when the launch id is invalid have a request with invalid id when i send a request to get launch i should receive a response with status code 404 i'm gonna rename this to error response now let's define those steps. Uh, this, if this is the same name, so if this, the when step has the same name as the previous one, it will already be defined. So I don't need to define it again. It will just use the same definition. And because we use the variable from this dot ID, that means it will run respectively with the correct ID each time, which is one of the good features of cucumber now we have the then step and this should be it let's give that a try it will still run the first three tests and the that's perfect looks like it's working there's a lot of great features you can do in the when you define the scenarios you can pass data here with for the different scenarios and reuse the step definitions is one of the best features I really like for Cucumber. For example, I can pass fields values. And I can say the ID here should be this. And then I'll copy this in here. And then I can use I'm going to generalize the, the message which says given I have a request with ID and then the ID will be defined in this data table and I'll show you how you can use that in the code. Perfect. Now let's go here and change this. Now because that's how the, the data is passed here we're going to have a data table. I'm just going to type it as any and in this data table we can actually have um, but what this basically does is gives you a table of the values like id equals to this and if you send more like name or whatever it's gonna add those as well and then we can change this to step data id i'm gonna remove the other given let's try this Oops, it's not working. Maybe we have... There we go. Um, I had the wrong function, but now that this is working, we can see how the power of Cucumber, how we can send data here and define our scenarios in a very nice way. And they're very clear. We can do the same for the response.
Yeah, that that should be it. Let's try this. Oh, I didn't use the correct name. So this is what happens if the um, step the name of the is not find, found in the step definitions. It says um, it's marked with you, and I think the right correct name is undefined. There you go. Now that we've corrected that, let's see how it goes. Perfect. All of that's run. We simplified our code, we simplified our test, and yeah, that's basically it. I really love Cucumber, I love, I really love using it for API tests. Um, it, it's very powerful, you can use a lot of this. I just crashed the service here um, in order to keep this video short, but you can definitely explore this more and use it to test your REST APIs, GraphQL APIs. You can use it for other, for UI tests as well with other packages, but this is how you can use Cucumber to test your APIs. Without getting too much into automation testing, I just want to mention that obviously it has great benefits like not manually testing code, making sure old feature works when new code comes in, making sure the new features are working as they're supposed to. And you don't have to test this on each environment, you can just put it in a pipeline and they just run. And that way we can support continuous deployment. There's a lot of other tools out there that you can use for automation testing. Most of them support front-end and back-end like Cypress or Selenium. And there's also Postman, which you can set up your test suites on, on and you can test your APIs with that. Yeah, and that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something. If you have any thoughts, put them down in the comments. I go through all the comments on every video. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you next one. Bye.